Welcome in everybody to Baxter, Tennessee as we get you ready for the Upperman Beast in the Cumberland County Jets. Another seven AAA battle between these two sides meeting for the second time this week on Upper Cumberland Reporter on Facebook and on the YouTube channel as well. My name is Jacob Vinson joined by Rusty Ellis. These two teams met yesterday. It was a big win for the Bees, 13-0 in seven innings. It was 9-0 after six, put four more up in the top of the seventh. And we're able to get a big win yesterday. Juju Yano, tremendous on the mound yesterday as well. Yeah, and I feel like a a lot of it stemmed from him throwing strikes early in at bats, working ahead early. It's what he did pretty much all game yesterday, and, and that shows up in the strikeout numbers. I think he ended up with nine strikeouts in total, finished with a complete game shutout. Uh, just gave up a couple hits here and there, but Cumberland County never really seemed to settle in and get comfortable against him, and that's what you want out of your starting pitcher. He kept him off balance all game, and the offense chipped away early, exploded for some runs in the middle and late innings, and ultimately took home a dominant win. This is the Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate pregame shows. We get you ready for the second matchup of the week between these two sides. Once again, 13-0 yesterday in favor of the Bees. Similar lineup. We'll get to the lineups coming up. Brought to you by Swallows Insurance right before the game gets started. You see the head coaches meeting right now. Coach Burnett for the Cumberland County Jets and Coach Shanks for the Upperman Bees as well. The Jets will be in their away gray uniforms, baby blue numbers, the Upperman Bees in their home black pinstripe uniforms as well. Another beautiful evening for some baseball. Once again, we're live on Facebook and on YouTube as well. You can search us on YouTube at Upper Cumberland Reporter. Make sure you subscribe to the channel there and make sure you give us a like to the stream on both sides. If you're on Facebook, make sure you give us a share, a like, and let us know where you're watching from in the comment section. We'll step aside when we come back. Starting lineups on the other side. This is the Crouch Team with Highlands Elite Real Estate pregame show. And this broadcast is presented by the South Willow Auto Clinic and Nick's Restaurant on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. <laughs> Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Delicious Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, All Good, and two in Cookville, Delicious pan and hand tossed pizza, pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Sonia Brown is a full service realtor and is licensed across the state of Tennessee, listing and selling residential and multifamily, land and farms, commercial and industrial properties. Sonia handles the sale from start to closing and beyond. Let her put her 30 plus years of experience to work for you. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate has been supporting student athletes in the Upper Cumberland since 1990. You can reach Sonia Brown at 931 979 7145. Sonia Brown, realtor with American Way Real Estate, is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in Allgood or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. 
With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peace in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit swallowsinsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future, it's what we do. Welcome back, everybody, to Baxter, Tennessee, as we get you ready for this contest between the Upperman Bees and the Cumberland County Jets. First for the Cumberland County Jets, this will be their starting nine in the lineup as follows. Kellen Burnett leads things off. He's the second baseman. Eli Ostrander is the shortstop, batting second. Ryder Myers bats third. He's in center field. Brody Mathis is in right field, batting fourth. Isaiah Shelton behind the plate, batting fifth. Jake Christopher bats sixth at first base. Ryland Burnett at third base, batting seventh. Michael Finch is the DH tonight. He is in the eighth spot. And batting ninth, Luke Poor out in left field. Aaron Minyard will be on the mound, being DH'd for by Michael Finch. Out in the field for the Upperman Bees on the mound is going to be Caden Shanks going to Lipscomb next season here in his senior season and playing some really good baseball. On the mound this year, 2.33 ERA, a 4-1 record, seven appearances, five starts. He's got two complete games. He's also got a save this year, 30 innings this season. And he's got 41 strikeouts to 20 walks, a 141 batting average against. That is the best on the team for the Bees. Behind the plate tonight will be Carson Shoup getting some reps from left to right in the infield. Brain Green at third base. Juju Yano is at short. Second base is Chris Worsing. Alec Wilson over at first. In the outfield from left to right, rookie Allison in left. In center field is Evan Huddleston and in right is Collier Bush. Rusty, as we get ready for this one, the Jets struggled yesterday against the pitching of Juju Yano. Now we'll see what Kane Shanks can do against this Jets lineup. Well, and the main key for, for Cumberland County would be patience, patience, patience. You mentioned, obviously, the high strikeout numbers, the low batting average against. The one thing that Caden has struggled with at times this year, the walks. They've sometimes been a little troublesome. They've led to some bigger innings for some teams. When he's had his best stuff, he's one of the toughest pitchers in the area, if not the toughest to hit off of. But you've got to be patient. You don't want to be over aggressive. You've got to fight off some tough pitches, and you want to try to work your way aboard to give the middle of the order some run scoring opportunities. The starting lineups brought to you by Swallows Insurance today. Our broadcast today presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic as they have been all season long. Our high school baseball coverage featuring Upperman in Cumberland County today. Goose is out here today. He'll also be over at softball as Upperman takes on DeKalb County. That one a huge seven AAA battle. Shanks comes home with the first pitch. It's a breaking ball across for strike one. We've seen Kane Shanks struggle in these first innings. Struggled last week against DeKalb County, allowing three runs. Fastball misses outside. Count goes to one and one. We'll see if he's able to get a little bit better of a start here against the Jets today. And that's what Coach Shanks said after the DeKalb County game here a week ago. It was, you know, he sometimes takes a little bit to get going, but once he finds his feel for his pitches, he's one of the best in the area. He had 90 on that fastball, and obviously a little bit warmer today. So the body a little bit looser, letting it fly. Shanks will be up, up to 90, maybe 91, 92. We'll see how high he can get. Breaking ball right back up the middle. Yano ranging to his left, makes the throw, and in time, Nice throw by Juju Yano from his shortstop position for the first down of the inning. Yeah, good range from the shortstop spot there for Yano as he gets covers up just behind the bag at second there and makes the makes the throw to first for the out. Try to keep you updated on games across the area, all kinds of games going on this evening. I mentioned to Cab County and Upperman softball going on just across the white to our left over on the softball diamond here in Baxter. 
as Eli Ostrander steps in for the first time. The shortstop for the Jets swings and misses at strike one. Kane Shanks already hit 90 on the gun early on in this one. Had Juju Yano yesterday, right around 84 or so, mid-80s for him. Breaking ball drops in there for strike two, and Shanks dealing in the first two batters. And that's the big pitch right there. When he's locating his fastball, his off speed just becomes that much tougher to pick up, and it freezes the hitter there. That's just a really tough pitch to have to pick up. Shanks readies the 0-2 fastball. High misses up there, and it'll be 1-2 and two on Ostrander, who's able to lay off of it. Pitched yesterday in the start, went four innings. Held him at bay for the first few innings, and then it got away. This one, dribbler left side. Yano charging gloves, makes a quick throw, and gets the throw in time again. A couple of nice throws from Juju Yano at shortstop, as obviously he's been all over the place here in the infield. Yesterday he was on the mound. Usually he's at second base, and obviously when Shanks is on the mound, he moves to the shortstop position. And that's something that Shanks is going to want to keep going today. That was one, And it was one thing that allowed Yano to go that full seven yesterday without an outrageous pitch count was he worked quickly and he worked to contact. He had the nine strikeouts, but he also early on induced a lot of ground outs, a lot of pop-ups. That's what you want to also try to do today if you're Caden Shanks. A couple of ground outs to the left side of the infield as Ryder Myers, the center fielder, steps in. Fastball misses high and away that time. The count goes to one and one. He's gotten ahead with a few of those breaking balls early on. Fastball he's been able to pinpoint as well. Here's the one-one. One down to 87. Like that's a low number. It all looks fast to me. It's it's up there. 2-1. Misses inside. Three balls and a strike now to Ryer Myers. Two gone in the inning. A couple of ground outs to start the game. The 3-1. Swung on. Fouled off and out of play. And the count will run full. And a good job they're getting the hitter to expand their strike zone a bit by Shanks. Puts that fastball just elevated enough to where it's really hard to get around on that one and keep it fair. So full count now trying to put the hitter away. Trying to work a clean tap of the first. The payoff. Breaking ball. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get the call in the outside corner. It will be a walk. Issued to Ryder Meyer. So a base runner aboard. Makes his way down to first for the Jets. Bring up the cleanup batter and Brody Mathis. Didn't play yesterday. Inserted into the lineup today. Yeah, give, give Myers a lot of credit there. That was a really, really tough take on a full count pitch there. That ball just missed being a, a wicked a wicked strikeout looking for Shanks, but now you've got to bear down and try to put put the next one away. Juju Yano just allowed five base runners yesterday, all of them on hits, four singles and a double. And outside of that, was able to retire everybody else. First pitch, a little check swing for a strike against Mathis. Runner on first here by way of walk. Two gone in the inning. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. Shanks already a much better start to this one than his last start against DeKalb County, allowing the three runs. The 0-2, high and away, one and two. Not a bad spot to miss in there. Not much that a hitter can do with that pitch there, and it's close enough to where you might get a swing, just didn't get one there. Trying to put down Brody Mathis here to end this top half of the first. Comes home with a 1-2. Breaking mm. ball drops in there, looking at strike three. It's a backwards K to end the top of the first. A birdie's loud strikeout for Kane Shanks, his first Strands a runner in the process. We head to the bottom of one. You're watching High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic, the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. <laughs>
We're back here in Baxter, zero to zero as we get started here in the bottom of the first as the bees get ready to come to the plates. They line up like this. Chris Worsing, no, he does not lead things off. Evan Huddleston leads things off. Justin Fallon batting second in the DH spot. Kane Shanks batting third. Chris Worsing is the cleanup batter. Alec Wilson bats fifth. Batting sixth is Juju Yano. Carson Chu batting seventh. Rookie Allison in the eighth spot. And Collier Bush batting ninth. Bring Green at third base, not batting as he's being hit for by Justin Fallon. Uh, obviously produced a lot of hits yesterday. It produced a lot of runs as well and a very productive ABs yesterday for pretty much everybody. Yeah, a, a really good complete outing by this Bees team. And I think a lot of it started with Evan Huddleston in the leadoff spot. I, you know, not afraid to say that. I think that raised a couple eyebrows when they threw him into the leadoff spot against Gordonsville. But really in those first two games, He's swung the bat really well. He's been aggressive in the right spots. He's worked good ABs. He's been aggressive on the base paths like a leadoff hitter with his kind of speed should be. It's worked out really well. He's been a good table setter, and especially when you've got the three behind him in Justin Fallon, Caden Shanks, and Chris Worsing, you need your leadoff hitter to be constantly on base for this team to really reach its potential. Minyard yesterday did throw in two innings. He allowed two hits, one run. It was earned. No walks and no strikeouts in his appearance yesterday as uh, he only threw 22 pitches in the two innings. So he's pretty open to go here in this one as well. He is the one on the mound for the Cumberland County Jets as we get started in this one. And uh, Evan Huddleston, you mentioned it, kind of thrust into that leadoff position. Obviously, Justin Fallon was out most of last week and then able, uh, able to be put into that DH spot for the last few games. And Huddleston has been a really good addition to to the top of the lineup. He had been batting ninth, so similar spot, but now he's getting maybe one or two more at-bats during the game in that leadoff spot. Well, and, and your leadoff hitter is an important part of your lineup because if you can if you can get on base consistently, especially to start a game and take early leads and stuff like that, especially with the pitching staff that Upperman possesses, that one, two run, that one or two runs that you can get in the first goes a long, long way, especially as you get deeper into the season. So a tough a tougher battle, I'd just say matchup-wise, with Minyard because Upperman does prefer to go up against guys that throw a little bit harder. But it's one of those that they they didn't they they put some good swings on him yesterday. He just didn't have a ton of luck. And Minyard goes ahead 0-1 here in the count on Evan Huddleston, who leads things off for the bees. Slow a little bit offensively for him to get going. They led three to zero early on in that one, and then they were finally able to break it open as the game continued on. And got to Ostrander, who was on the mound in the start after four innings. And you're working out of the stretch. The 1-1 one -one swung on, ripped down the line, and Huddleston finds the turf in the outfield left side, makes his way down to first, takes a peek at second. Well, head back into that first base bag. It's a leadoff single for the Bees. Yeah, did a good job of sitting back on that off speed and just dropping the barrel of the bat on it. Ends up with a single. Probably could have tried to turn that into a double with his speed. I think it was wise to throw up the brakes there. No need to run into an early out with the heart of your order coming up. So able to get the first hit of the ball game for the Bees. Evan Huddleston, who's always got speed over there at first base. Definitely a stealing threat we have saw yesterday. And Isaiah Sheldon, who's behind the play. Pretty good arm. We'll see if they try to run on him a little bit more today. There he goes. First pitch swinging. Throw coming down. Not a great one. Goes into the outfield. Gets past everybody. Huddleston will advance all the way up to third. Fallon did swing, so the count goes to 0-1. And Huddleston all the way over to third base. Yeah, and, and that's just what good speed at the top of your lineup does out there. They, he got a pretty good a pretty good pitch to run on by Minyard, who's also a little bit slower to the plate, and then just not really a good throw at all that goes into center field, and you end up with an extra, extra 90 feet because of it. And so Domino's stolen base and then advancing up to third on the throw by Huddleston. Now just 90 feet away and nobody out here in the bottom of the first. A one count to Fallon at the plate. This one misses inside. Good block by Shelton. And we'll see that a lot from Shelton today. He was kept busy yesterday with those off-speed pitches in the dirt. Was able to stay in front of a lot of them. Let a couple of them get past. But if he lets any get past today, it's going to go all the way to the backstop. And obviously that... Always spells trouble. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on. High in the air out towards center, but playable. And the catch is made. Here comes Huddleston. Good throw coming in. It's not going to be in time. Huddleston scores. It'll be a sack fly. As the catch made out there by Ryder Myers. Really good throw, but Huddleston a good amount of speed 
in there standing up. And a good job of, uh, by Justin Fallon of just doing doing his job there. A runner at third, less than two outs. You're doing whatever you can to get that run in a sack fly, a ground out, a hit, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So a good job of just putting putting enough air under that one to get Huddleston in. And now, I mean, we saw it yesterday twice, Jacob. The Bees could very easily get another runner on third here in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, two triples yesterday. Ripped it down the line, and then the second one was just kind of in the gap. He just turned on the Jets around second. It was a little bit closer. Both of them were stand-up triples, though. First one in there for ball one. One gone in the inning after the fly out by Fallon, able to bring home the first run of the game for the Bees. And a one to zero lead. That one misses low, two balls and no strikes. A little preview for trivia coming up. Well, of course, we'll have on this day in history. Uh, it's a tough one for trivia, we'll just say that. Well, Petey failed me yesterday telling me Ichiro Suzuki, so I'm not <laughs> listening to his answer today. What a called strike on the outside corner, two and one. Minyard on the mound, the lefty. Brings it home for the Jets. Misses low, three balls and a strike. We saw Shanks throwing 90 in the top of the first, and now that one clocked in at 55 miles an hour. A little yeah. bit of a difference. Worked out for him yesterday, just the two hits allowed. He issues a walk here, and it will be another base runner aboard in the form of Caden Shanks. First walk of the day issued by Minyard on the mound. So Chris Worsing, who leads the team in batting average as a freshman this season, batting 413. He is 16 points higher than the next closest in Justin Fallon, who just brought home the first run of the game. And another ribby for him is 20th run batted into the season. Worsing will try to get it going here. Watch the first one miss outside. Throw over to first. Shanks not really tempting to go just yet. Yeah, someone with good speed, you always want to check on the runner and make sure they're not getting too big of a lead on you. Saw Huddleston take a bag and then advance up to third on the throwing error. Check over again, and he's in back safely. No, no one's mentioned it, the differences between MLB and high school. You can throw over as many times as you want here at this level. There he goes. Shelton, the throw down, pretty good one, but not in time. Kane Schenck's able to take the domino stolen base into scoring position at second. Yeah, and a, a good jump there as well on Minyard, who we mentioned yesterday, a little bit slower to the plate. So when Shanks is able to get that kind of a jump, it's really hard as a catcher to have to try to throw him out. Still a really good throw down there, just way too late. One to zero lead already for the Bees. One gone here in the bottom of the first. Another toasty evening in Baxter. Yesterday was really nice as well in Crossville. Shanks creeping his way off second. Minyard comes home, misses away in the count. Moves to 2-0 and oh on Warsing. 3-0. Oh. Minyard peeking back to second. Shanks hopping around. He will check back. Shanks dives back in safely. Definitely in the mind of Minyard on the mound. Yeah, especially when you're staring back that long as a pitcher. You you know as a runner that that throw over is coming. You've got to react fast enough to get back in like Shanks did, but he is absolutely in Minyard's head. Working on a 3-0 count to the batter. We're seen at the plate. Comes home with it. Misses away. It's another walk. And runners on first and second now for Alec Wilson. And that, that's one thing that that speed on the base path does. If when you distract that pitcher even just enough, that command leaves him enough to where he's he didn't get a single strike over the plate to Worsing, and now you've got two on with one out for Alec Wilson, someone who I'm sure Coach Shanks would love to get this bat going. He's gotten a few going these last couple of games. I think Alec Wilson's is the next one he really would love to get going. The only pitcher not available for the Jets will be Ostrander, who was used yesterday in four innings. Saw Burnett's Rylan, Rylan Burnett come in later on in the ball game. This one misses inside to Wilson, 1-0. Alec batting 271. 
Got 10 runs driven in so far on the season. Looking to add on one, maybe two. One gone in the inning. Minier to peek back to second. Comes up with the 1-0. Shanks takes off. Shelton, the throw down to third is not there in time. Shanks takes third and moving up to second base in the process is worsening. More domino stolen bases. And now second and third for Alec Wilson. And now you're in that same scenario as Justin Fallon was in if you're Alec Wilson where it would less than two outs and a runner at third. You're just trying to do whatever you can to get that run in. Doesn't matter if it's a ground out, a fly ball, whatever. You're just looking to get Shanks in to score. He's in the count here 2-0. and oh. Minyard comes home, swings at it, and good hack on it. Right through it, 2-1. and one. You mentioned it, that slower velocity, a little bit harder to sit back on at times. Wilson trying to do just that here, still ahead, 2-1. and one. Here comes Minyard with it. That one drops in the dirt, and the count will go to 3-1, and one, in danger of walking a third straight batter. 19 pitches already here in the bottom of the first for Minyard on the mound, who threw 22 of them yesterday in just two innings. Imagine we might see Burnett maybe a little bit later on. The 3-1 swung on, drilled back up the middle, and that'll be down for a hit. Shanks will score. They're going to send another runner as well, and then they will stop him in the process. Heading back will be Chris Worsing. It'll be runners on the corners and a 2-0 lead for the Bees, still with one out. Good level swing by Alec Wilson there. Just sends that one softly up the middle for a line drive RBI single. Again, a hit that you're hopeful if you're the Upperman Bees that that's what gets his back going. Just, a, again, a really good level swing there. Juju Yano about the only batter that struggled yesterday as he only made his way aboard one time. That was in the seventh when almost everybody made their way aboard. Four runs came across in the seventh for the Bees in the 13-0 victory. He was tremendous on the mound. So Chris Worsing stands at third. Alec Wilson over at first. One out here in the bottom of the first, and the Bees lead at 2-0 with Juju Yano at the plates. That one misses high, and it's 1-0. Bees have another couple of big games coming up this week. They'll be at Watertown on Thursday, and then at CPA on Saturday. We'll be there for both of them. A couple of really good non-district matchups. Watertown, one of the best teams in 2A, CPA in the private school classification. Foul tip into the net, 1-1. One one. Mentioned Goose was out here for the start of this one. He's headed over to softball as well as Upperman takes on DeKalb County. That one drops in there for a strike. He was... Here yesterday as well as Upperman got a dramatic victory over Stone Memorial to stay undefeated in district play. A walk-off, bases loaded walk. So about as uh, as tight as it gets here. Take him any way you can. One and two on Yano. Long couple of looks over. Minyard comes home, misses high and away, and the count evened up at two balls and two strikes now on the shortstop for the Bees. Two two, missed inside, laid steal by Alec Wilson, and he's in the scoring position with a domino stolen base, and picked a good pitch to do it on too. There, the in, off off speed that landed just inside, just off the plate, and catcher's mind was instead of on the runner was on you know trying to frame it and figure out where it missed, and Wilson takes advantage and moves into scoring position. So now a full count, three and two to Juju Yano, still just one out in the inning, and runners on second and third. Minyard comes home. Hit well, Yano out towards right, but right at the right fielder. Tagging up Worsing, he will take home, and that is the third run of the game for the Bees. It's another productive out for Upperman. They lead it 3-0. to zero. Yep, exactly what you just said, a productive out. Just got that ball up deep enough to the right fielder where you're able to score Worsing from third. And now you've got a chance with some two-out two out magic and a hitter in Carson Shoup that's really starting to see the ball really well these last couple of games. Chance to maybe add on to this lead. 3 nothing already, a lot of runs. Almost plenty enough for Caden Shanks. Now Shoup yesterday made his way aboard three times. He also stole third base. Showed off the wheels. Yes, he did. Two gone in the inning. Wilson on second base. Shoup at the plate. That one misses outside 1-0. and 0. 
on Shoop, who is doing the catching tonight. He also caught yesterday a little bit in the last few innings of the game. Rookie Allison getting a, a day off. He's out in left field still. So still playing, but day off in terms of not behind the plate, obviously. Especially back-to-back -back days were a little bit toastier. Try to keep him fresh for a couple of big games coming up Thursday and Saturday. As so the count goes to 2-0 and on Shoop. He's got a duck on the pond here and Wilson at second base. 2-0 drilled in the gap left side, down for a hit. Here comes Alec Wilson, takes the turn. He's going to head for home. He will score, and it's another RBI single for the Bees and makes it 4-0 here in the bottom of the first. And Carson Shoops keeps swinging that hot bat as he gives them some two-out magic with an RBI single, and now he'll come off for a courtesy run. It looks like it's going to be Carson Holroyd. Carson Holroyd will come on to run. Getting a few starts this season, and he's running today. Rookie Allison at the plate for the first time, batting eighth today. Collier Bush stands in the on-deck circle. And these 7-8-9 batters really productive yesterday in their win of 13-0 against the Jets. Two outs here in the bottom of the first with the rookie Allison at the plate. They have timed up Minyard much better here in this outing. Well, and that's what Noah and I talked about it on Saturday against Gordonsville, and I think we talked about it a little bit yesterday. That's the key in this lineup, ultimate, and this team achieving what it wants to achieve is that six through nine spot, the six to nine spots in the lineup because they're swinging the bats really well right now. Allison puts a charge into it. Good catch out there in left field is a good jump on it by Luke Poor, who's able to make the grab out and left for the final out. Four runs across for the Bees. They lead it four to zero after one. You're watching High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Delicious Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, All Good, and two in Cookville, Delicious Pan and Hand Tossed Pizza, Pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Four runs on three hits, one error, one left on for the Bees in the bottom of the first. They lead it four to zero. And Kane Shanks taking the mound for the second inning of work and a much better start compared to his last start against DeKalb County. He had been struggling in first innings so far this season and a big reason why his ERA is, well, for him, maybe a little bit higher. 2-3-3, which is still a good ERA, but for his standards, he'd like to see that be a little bit lower. And a big reason was that ERA in that first inning. After the first inning, he's been tremendous. Well, he got a good start here against the Jets, only allowing the one base runner. Well, and it helps now that you've got four runs of support behind you. And we already said it, you know, that he's Caden Shanks is one of those pitchers. You get one or two runs for him, and you feel like he can go the distance, and that's more than enough for him. Um, but now having a four-run lead, having a clean first inning, he's found his rhythm seemingly. He threw a lot of first pitch strikes in that first frame. You feel like he's only going to get better as the game goes along, so it's not going to be an easy task for these Jets hitters. It's been a good mix between the breaking ball and the fastball. He's touched 90 on the breaking ball, and you mentioned it. The switch between Minyard and Shanks on the mound. You've got Shanks who's touching 90. You've got Minyard who's right around 60. He's dropped into the 50s as well on the fastball, and Worked yesterday for a couple of innings, but the Bees were able to time him up today. We'll see if Shanks is able to keep it going here against five, six, and seven in the lineup. Isaiah Shelton, Jake Christopher, and Ryland Burnett. First pitch in there for a ball. The 1-0. Wow. They're going to say it hit him. Hmm. He's got that elbow pad on, and they're going to call that a hit batter. Shelton will make his way down to first. That might be the least amount of contact I've ever seen a hit-by-pitch make because he didn't move in the box at all. So normally you see someone get hit, you know, their reaction says it. There wasn't much of a reaction there at all. But, well, now you know if you're Shanks that when you work inside, you've got to make sure to get a little bit more on the plate. So a base runner aboard here, the leadoff man aboard. I almost tried to pick him off, and we've seen him do it. He's got a really good move. Yano had a couple of really good moves yesterday as well. I believe he picked somebody off actually yesterday. Well, too. we thought he did. Oh. Well, he did. He, he just, called, he just he didn't, he, he didn't officially get it. 
showing bunt here and a strike across as Christopher was backing out of the way. Christopher will step back in. The first baseman who showed bunt the first time. On the 0-1, he keeps it held back. Swings away and it's 0-2. Yeah, he pulled the bunt, he pulled that bat back about as quick as possible when he saw the, the 88 heat from Caden Shanks there. So now 0-2, now you've got to choke up a little bit and try to fight something off. Runner on first base, the leadoff batter in Sheldon at the plate, Jake Christopher, the first baseman for the Jets. The 0-2 breaking ball and a called strike three. Got him looking second strike out of the day. It's a birdie's lounge strikeout for Caden Shanks in the first out here in the second. And that breaking ball, when it is on, it is almost unhittable. Starts it at your face and it breaks all the way to the outside part of the zone. Showing bunt again is Ryland Burnett. That one is a called strike anyways. Yeah, and that's a tough change of pace when you go from that 88, 90 miles an hour down to 73, 74. That's a, that's a big drop in speed that Cumberland County is just having a hard time picking up. It's really freezing them right now. Here comes the 0-1. Pass ball that time, missed inside, one and one. Burnett, the third baseman yesterday. We saw him on the mound at the end of the game. We'll see if we see him maybe in a little bit in this one as well. As Minyard allowed the four runs on the three hits, few walks as well. Another breaking ball drops in for another called strike, and it's one and two. He has got that breaking ball dialed. Shelton over at first for the Jets. One, two, fastball, swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back birdies, loud strikeouts, and now three in the ball game for Shanks, two outs in the inning. Yeah, and just blew that one past Burnett there. Just a really, 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 really tough pitch try hit there out on the outer third, especially if you're not able to catch up to it. Only so much you can do there. The DH Michael Finch will step in for the Jets. Trying to get something going. Nobody has touched Shanks yet. A walk and a hit by pitch have been the only two base runners so far in the first two innings. Called strike on the outside corner, 0-1. We'll do on this day in history in the top of the third. We'll get to trivia in the fourth. Two away here in the second. Swung on and missed, and it's 0-2. Already a 4-0 lead for the Bees. A couple of sack flies, a couple of RBI singles. The 0-2 pitch, breaking ball. He waved out. It got all the way to the backstop. Shoop is trying to get it. Shanks actually will grab it, make the throw to first. And that will be the final out. So it'll be another birdie's loud strikeout. Fourth one of the day, three in a row in the inning for Shanks and Strands a runner in the process. It's four to zero, we head to the bottom of two. You're watching High School Baseball presented by the South Florida Auto Clinic and Nick's Restaurant on Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Back here in Baxter, 4-0 lead for the Bees as we get started in the bottom of the second. And a really good outing for Kane Shanks Bruin right now. Four strikeouts through two innings of play. Coming up to the plate, 9-1-2. and two, Collier Bush, Evan Huddleston, and Justin Fallon. Aaron Minyard still on the mound for the Jets. And we'll see if he's able to maybe get that timing off for the Bees in this second inning because... In the first, they were really able to time him up and time him well. Well, and they did a good job of just sitting back on the ball. That's one thing that, you know, when you see these players, they, they've been successful against pitchers that have high velocities because they go up there looking for that. That's what they want to hit. But when a kid comes out there throwing 55, 56 miles an hour and they're not touching higher than 61, 62 on the gun, 
it's one of those you have to be a little more patient. You've got to wait on it. You've got to see the movement on it, and you've got to see the ball cleanly out of their hands. They did a good job in that first inning getting four runs across to, to take a lead, so see if they can keep that going. Two sack fly RBIs, two singles. They had four runs in the inning, three hits, one error, and then one man left on base for the Bees in that bottom of the first. It'll be Collier Bush who has been having a great last couple of weeks. He got his first couple of hits last week against DeKalb County, and Collier Bush has rocketed up the batting average, now batting 214. He's got three hits on the season, and he's going to be coming to the plate here looking for another one. He had one of the best at-bats of the season, plate appearances of the season yesterday where he fouled off probably close to eight pitches in the A-B and was able to draw a walk after that. Yeah, and it's at-bats like that you love from the lower part of your lineup because we talked about it yesterday. Their job is to flip the lineup back to the top and get guys on and get on base for their big hitters, and that's what they were able to do yesterday. Minyard misses a little bit low. Want to know on Callier Bush, who's back down right field again. He can play pretty much anywhere in the outfield. We've seen, obviously, Justin Fallon in center and Evan Huddleston in center. And then on the corners, we'll see him cycle in and out. The 1-0. One one oh. Called strike 1-1. One and one. Keep those comments coming along. Let us know where you're watching from and who you're cheering for. Give us a like, give us a share. You can also watch us on YouTube. Search Upper Cumberland Reporter on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and like over there as well. Noah battling some uh, allergies this week. And obviously the warm weather, it has definitely been uh, dealing with some people. <laughs> That one misses inside, and it's 3-1 and one on Callier Bush. This might be the earliest in a live stream I've ever had a final score, <laughs> but uh, Gordonsville softball beats Pickett County 19 to nothing. So there you go. It is 6-0-8. There's a called strike, 3-2. and two. I, uh, I'd imagine Kaylee Plumley pitched most of that game. Probably didn't pitch as much as we think. Yeah, I'm going to guess there was maybe two innings, maybe. three innings played in that one. This one swung on. Bush drills it right at the center fielder who gets a good bounce on it and able to make the grab Ryder Myers for the first out of the inning. But still, he's been barreling a lot of these balls up, and he's been hitting them out towards center field. Myers just in the right spot that time and read it well. Yeah, that, that's a swing and a net bat you'll live with if you're Coach Shanks. You ran the count full. You battled up there, and you put a good swing on the ball. You just hit it right at somebody. If you're making that kind of contact consistently, you'll take that from your from the bottom of your lineup. So it will be the top coming back up in Evan Huddleston. It was... Able to make his way aboard by almost that exact same way, but that time it's at the left fielder, and he will be a line out for the second out of the inning. As Poor is able to make the grab again. And Justin Fallon will come to the plate for the second time at the sack fly RBI. His first time up, 20th run batted in of the season for Justin. Now a team high with Caden Shanks. He's 13 and 8 on the year, undefeated in district play at 7 and 0. That one misses high and away, 1 and 0. Livingston Academy taking on Stone Memorial, a game that will be, I beg your pardon, Livingston Academy not taking on Stone Memorial. They played last week, of course, but that was the big one. We'll keep track of all the other seven AAA scores going on. Stone into Cab, Livingston and White County. This one high in the air, right center. Trying to find it in the sky. That's going to drop in the gap. Fallon already at second base will throw on the brakes, and he is in there safely as the ball caroms all the way to the third baseline. Fallon looking at it the whole way. Minyard over there. And Fallon able to make his way up to second after he hit it a mile high in the air and then was able to make his way to second base. Yeah, and as that ball was traveling out there, it's one of those that it looks like a routine fly ball, but the way that the defense was aligned, they were kind of shading him more to pull, and that ball ends up dropping out there between right and center, right and center, and you end up with a double out of it. So now a chance for Caden Shanks, who did a lot of damage yesterday in this kind of situation, a chance to, again, get another two-out run. So it will be a South Little Auto Clinic double. It's Fallon is in there at second base. Shanks will be at the plate. Two away in the inning. Shanks swinging first pitch off the end of the bat. This is going to be a tough play. Shanks 
Blazing down to first in the throw, caught at first by Christopher, but Shanks is safe and runners will be on the corners for Chris Worsing. Yeah, and a really good job there by Christopher to basically save a run and maybe much more there as that ball looked like it was going to be headed up the right field line. Makes the diving stab or makes the jumping stab to to at least catch the ball. Doesn't re record the out, but you at least give yourself a chance here with Worsing at the plate to maybe get out of this inning. Worsing walked his first time up. Came around to score a run. We'll see if he's able to put a bat on the ball here. Runners on the corners with two outs. Minyard, a long look in. Shanks goes, swung on, and Worsing puts it through the outfield. Fallon will score the fifth run of the game. Shanks running hard, sliding into third, and he is safe. He went right through the second base bag on the ground ball to the outfield. Poor got the throw in, but not in time as Shanks is able to take third in the process. Yeah, if you're poor out there, you got to be a little bit quicker getting that ball in there because no, a, a, a runner shouldn't be able to advance first to third on a, on a hit to you in left field. So, But good aggressive base running there by Shanks, who was going on the play to begin with, and now with Alec Wilson up, who put a really good swing on his first A-B, chance to add on further. RBI single his first time up and then stole a bag. He's got runners on the corners here with two outs. Swinging first pitch at the shortstop. Picked up by Ostrander, flips to second, and that'll be the final out. Two runners stranded, but a run across for the Bees. It's 5-0. to zero. We are through two. You're watching High School Baseball, presented by the South Willow Auto Clinic and Nick's Restaurant, the Frontier Chevy, UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Fire and Vine in Cookville is the Upper Cumberland's home for delicious Chicago-style pizza, beef, chicken, fish, and more. Located in Cookville's historic downtown district, Fire and Vine's food and atmosphere will keep you coming back for more. Take in stunning views with creative food and drinks on the rooftop. Fire and Vine is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Here in Baxter, it's a 5-0 lead for the Bees as we get started in the top half of the third, 9-1-2. and two. Due up, Luke Poor, Callan Burnett, and Eli Ostrander. And Dusty, let's do some on this day in history. Today, we're going to go back to 1940. Bob Feller threw a no-hitter on opening day as the Indians beat the White Sox 1-0 in 47-degree Chicago weather. Not as bad as 27-degree Crossville weather, I will say. <laughs> it is just the second no-hitter thrown on opening day as Leon Red Ames threw one for the Giants in 1909. It's a pretty impressive stat. That is impressive. Haven't, hasn't been done since 1940 up to this point. And it's kind of remarkable when you think about the talent that's come through the majors and the pitchers that have been in the league. Obviously, a lot of injuries kind of hit the game right now for a multitude of reasons. None of them pitch clock related, by the way. Um, but that's kind of that's impressive to think it hadn't been done that many times. You would think that th there might be at least one every few years or so. Bob Feller, the last one to do it in 1940, and 1-0 ball game at that. So that one was uh, definitely a quick-moving game in the MLB. But, yeah, you mentioned it. A lot of them hurt this year. A lot of hard-throwing guys hurt this year. That is definitely becoming a trend in Major League Baseball. The guys that can throw 100, upper 90s, consistently having a lot of problems with the UCLs. So we'll see if maybe we'll start to see a shift back to the kind of crafty pitchers, crafty lefties, crafty righties. Well, I think it's also, you know, everyone puts the emphasis on strikeouts and uh, on the numbers that, you know, strikeouts are great and all, and you'd love to lead the league in strikeouts. But, I mean, it, it's it's just as effective. If you're able to pitch seven, eight innings into a game and you're able to keep your pitch count under control and you throw low to mid-90s, I feel like that's just as effective as going five or six innings, if not more effective than uh, going five or six innings and throwing 100. Goose went over to softball and got hit by a foul ball, so he's all over the place tonight. Luke Poor leads things off, the ninth batter for the Jets in the lineup. Fastball misses high, and it's 1-0 from Shanks, who's on the mound. Really good second inning. He hit the first batter and barely hit the first batter in Shelton. And then he had three straight birdies lounge strikeouts. He's already got four in the game through two innings. Comes the 2-0 to pour. There's a called strike, 2-1. and one. Mm -hmm. 
Shanks delivers. Swung on. Right side of the infield. Worsing is there. Flips on to first for the first down of the inning. We saw him yesterday. He had to make a couple of rangy plays, both through his left and his right in the outfield on some of those pop flies that we mentioned it didn't seem like they were going to be that shallow, and he made a couple of nice grabs. Yeah, there was one that he made running from a lot closer to second than he is positioned right now. He made it running from all the way from there to about probably 10, 15 feet beyond where first pace is, just ranged over and made a really good play. So he, he's been impressive defensively wherever Coach Shanks has put him. Kellen Burnett back at the plate. The leadoff batter grounded out to Juju Yano, who had to range all the way over to second base, the first batter of the ball game. That one missed outside on the breaking ball. The 1-0 fastball is a called strike. One away in the inning. This one back up the middle. Yano is there. Has to hurry and makes the throw in time for the second out of the inning. Shanks almost got a glove on it. And Yano was able to get there in time for the second out. And you like this efficient, the efficient way that Caden Shanks is working now. Two quick outs on not a lot of pitches. I think he's only thrown four pitches to, to these first two batters combined. So chance at a very quick shutdown inning now for Caden. He's got a couple of ground outs after getting the three strikeouts in the second. And a couple of ground outs and a strikeout in the first. It'll be Eli Ostrander stepping in. Breaking ball drops in there for a strike one. It's almost automatic whenever he rips it off. Swing and a miss on the fastball with two. Two gone. Owen two to Ostrander. Shanks trying to work a quick one. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Got him to look at it. It's another birdies lounge strikeout and struck him out looking. Fifth strikeout of the day. And a three up three down inning for the first time today for Caden Shanks in the top half of the third. We head to the bottom of three. You're watching High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Loading the kids in the car, brokering peace in the back seat, mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Visit swallowsinsurance.com or call us today, 931-526-4025. Protecting your future, it's what we do. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Bees coming back to the plate in the bottom of the third. Six, seven, and eight do up. Juju, Yano, Carson, Shoop, and Rookie Allison do up here in the inning to get things going against Aaron Minyard, who is still on the mound. He's got 43 pitches through two innings so far and has not been able to record a ton of outs. He's allowed a lot of base runners. The Bees have only left three base runners aboard. They have played at five runs. They have six hits through the first two innings of play. They've timed him up pretty well in the two innings of work today. Yeah, really good swings. They've been efficient. They've 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 had a few at bats with guys at third with less than two outs where they've just come up looking to just put the ball in play and get that run in, and they've done that job consistently. So it's one of those where if you keep doing that, you feel like you can keep pulling away and adding on to this lead. We'll try to get some scores from around the area. Checked on. Make sure you stick around for trivia coming up. I've been told it's really difficult. It's not easy, I'll be honest. Well, I don't get them right half the time anyway, so. It can't be any worse than that one you gave Noah a few weeks ago at Smith County where you asked him, what was that, <laughs> about a, a rookie from 1957? Uh, this one is further back than that, I'll be honest oh. with you. Juju Yano swings and misses at strike one. It's a one to zero lead for DeKalb County over on the softball diamonds. Two runners on for the Bees, though. Here in the bottom of the third, there's a called strike, and it's 0-2 on Yano with the sack fly RBI. His first time up. 
figured that one over there between Upperman and DeCamp County softball would be a good one. That one kind of looped in there, and Yano swings through it. First strikeout of the day. It's a birdies lounge strikeout for Aaron Minyard. First down of the inning. Looked like he was going to have a quick inning in the second. Got a couple of lineouts, and then three straight hits played at a run for the Bees. Yeah, just, you know... An unfortunate placement on the ball is that one's lined to the third baseman, a rocket off the bat of Carson shoot for the second out. Yeah, just, you know, a uh, you know a, f a double that kind of dropped out in no man's land out in right center by Fallon, and then a couple couple just, you know, not, balls weren't hardly hit by Caden Shanks and Chris Warsing just enough to get the run in. A couple tough luck plays for, for Minyard. The ball caught Ryland Burnett over there at the third base. This one swung on by rookie Allison out towards center field. Ryder Myers is under it, and that is a quick inning for the Jets. One, two, three goes Aaron Minyard on about four pitches in that inning. That one was impressive. A strikeout, a lineout, and a flyout to end it. We are through three, and the Bees lead at five to zero. You're watching High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic, the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. <laughs> Top of the fourth here in Baxter, 5-0 lead for the Bees coming to the plate for the Jets. 3-4-5, and five, Ryder Myers, Brody Mathis, and Isaiah Shelton. Caden Shanks has been great on the mound. It is trivia time. Rusty, are you ready for trivia? I'm about as ready as I'll ever be. What pitcher holds the record for season-low ERA? So an ERA at the okay. end of the season. What is the record for season-low ERA? Bob Gibson, Mordecai Brown, Tim Keefe, or Dutch Leonard. Once again, <laughs> what pitcher holds the season record for ERA? The lowest ERA for the season, Bob Gibson, Mordecai Brown, Tim Keefe, or Dutch Leonard. This record still stands. What was the by ERA? By the way, 0.86 God. was the ERA. And the ERA you're not surprised to see right now in the bigs for this point in the season, but normally never happens this late in the year or, or later in the year. First pitch in there to Ryder Myers, swings right through. How about that last inning by uh, Minyard on the mound? Five pitches. Yeah, efficient. He worked. He was in the zone. He played to contact, and that's the exact kind of way you want to pitch this upper end team when you've got them a little bit off. When you can get them a little bit off balance, you want them to put the ball in play, and for him, thankfully for the Jets and Minyard, his defense behind him made plays and got the outs. Upper men trying to improve to 14-8 and eight on the year and go to 8-0 and no in district plays. That one misses slow and outside. It's 2-1. and one to Ryder Myers. They'll get Watertown on Thursday and then CPA on Saturday. 2-1. Swing and a miss, 2-2. Two two. <laughs> well, Noah's got his guess on the uh, on the trivia question. Noah says Tim Keefe. This one drilled shallow <laughs> high in the air. Felt like John Sterling there. <laughs> it looked like it was hit a lot harder <laughs> it off the end. Like it, it, it looked like he got it off the end of the bat there, ultimately, and that's why it ended up didn't traveling. But it sounded solid at first. Not quite the uh, the John Sterling. At least we have video to support <laughs> what we're saying. John Sterling, someone said, imagine like listening to the radio call of that and you're a Yankees fan, and it's it's far, it's gone, and it's caught. <laughs> well, that was apparently not a strike. Wow. And it's 1-0 and on Brody Mathis on a check swing. Yeah, John Sterling retired on Monday. Longtime Yankees radio broadcaster. 
This one. He does swing you, and it's one and one. And yeah, if, if you haven't seen it, you can probably look it up as Giancarlo Stanton, who hit one that he said was gone. It was actually caught in left field about five feet shy of the <laughs> wall and would have tied up the game late in a game. It is one of the funniest things, one of the funniest videos hilarious. you'll see. One, two. Swung on and missed. It's another birdie's lounge strikeout for Kane Shanks on the mound and two outs in the inning. I think the only thing funnier I've seen in the MLB recently, and you've probably seen it, Jacob, just because I know you, you're you a big baseball guy like I am, the fact that there's an entire compilation of Josh Donaldson like bat flipping and like <laughs> as on, on pitches on balls that he didn't hit for home runs. He does do that a lot, yeah. Two away here in the inning as Isaiah Shelton comes to the plate. A little check swing. It's called strike anyways, 0-1. Shanks has been efficient. 50 pitches. He's almost through four innings. Three and two thirds. The breaking ball swung on down the line. Bring Green in foul territory. We'll grab it for strike two. Not quite as quick of an inning as Minyard had in that last half inning. We'll see if Shanks is able to get out of it here with a pop out, a strikeout. And we'll see what Shelton is able to do with the catcher. Here comes the 0-2. Fastball called strike three, seven. Birdies lounge strikeouts on the day and another strikeout looking for Caden Shanks. And we head to the bottom of four. Trivia answer is coming up next. You're watching High School Baseball presented by Nick's Restaurant and the South Willow Auto Clinic on the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Delicious pan pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, All Good, and two in Cookville, Delicious pan and hand-tossed pizza, pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Back here in Baxter for the bottom of the fourth with the Bees leading at 5-0. to zero. Coming up for the Bees, 9-1-2 and two yet and again. Collier Bush, Evan Huddleston, and Justin Fallon as Minyard had a five-pitch inning in the bottom of the third. All right. Let's bring in the trivia answer our question. What pitcher holds the record for season low ERA? Bob Gibson, Mordecai Brown, Tim Keefe, or Dutch Leonard? Well, for the second day in a row, I'm going to go with somebody. I'm going to stick with Noah's answer because I'm not going to be wrong by myself. I'm going to go with Tim Keefe. I'm going to guess Noah cheated. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Okay. Tim Keefe had a 0 0.86 <laughs> ERA in 1880. That's why I think he cheated because it was in 1880, 1880 during his rookie season. That season, he had 12 starts. Get, get this. He had 12 starts, a 0 0.86 ERA. <laughs> he went 6-6. Six and six. <laughs> He only allowed, he got no runs he only allowed he 10 got... earned runs in 105 Jeez. innings in 12 starts. In 1886, he went 42-20 and 20 in 64 starts. <laughs> they made him different back then. That's nuts. The record, do you know what the record is for most wins in a season by what a pitcher? Was it? Th this name this is, is real. tremendous, by the way. Old Hoss Radborn. There we go. He went 60 and 12. I'm pretty sure Goose has his jersey, but. In 1884. <laughs> Can we repeat that record one more time? 60 Jeez. and 12 in 1884. So I'm going to take a wild stab at it and say there was no such thing as load management back then. Not a chance. <laughs> his name was Old Hoss. So. Old Hoss. I love it. Bush pops this one up in the infield. First pitch, and it is caught. And again, it was similar to what we saw last inning, Minyard again, pitching to contact. He's got Upperman a little bit off balance after that first inning. And give Minyard credit. Out after that four spot in the first inning, he's done a good job of limiting the damage and keeping the deficit at this 5 nothing mark. He's only given up the one run since then. So doing a good job of pitching to contact and making Upperman hit the ball off of him. Minyard has faced in the last four batters, he has thrown five pitches. Six pitches. Efficient. It is back to the top of the lineup and Evan Huddleston. He swings first pitch, gloved wow. at third. Burnett makes the throw, but it is past Christopher. Huddleston will move up to second. He looks at third. They're going to send him over there. Here comes the throw to third. Pretty good one, but he slides in safely. Huddleston able to leg it out. 
Looked like it was going to be another quick inning. Instead, Uddleston makes his way all the way over to third base on the throwing error. Well, and simply put, that's just what the speed of Evan Huddleston, that's the speed, that's the pressure that puts on the defense is they know they've got a fast runner. They've got to make a quick play there and just a little bit too low of a throw. And because of that, Evan Huddleston ends up making his way over to third. You've got a chance now with less than two outs to add on to this lead. It'll be Justin Fallon coming to the play. Doubled his last time up. He's also got a sack flyer, RBI. One gone in the inning. Minyard comes home. Swinging first pitch down the line, and that'll bring home another run. Fallon turns it at first, looking at two. The throw comes in, and it'll just be an RBI single for Justin Fallon, his second run driven into the game. And now we're starting to see him go back to that aggressive approach. We've seen him the last couple of games be really, really patient, work a lot of counts, just work his way on base. But there, got a pitch he liked, was able to hit it down the third baseline and get that run in from third. And now Caden Shanks a chance to do some damage with the runner on base. I'm sure we'll probably see Fallon put in motion as well. Shanks has been aboard twice, a walk and a single. Fallon over at first. Minyard still on the mound. First pitch, a little bit low, 1-0. Dropped in there at 54 miles an hour. He is at 52 pitches right now through three and a third. As we are here in the bottom of the fourth, runner goes. Shelton the throw, really good one. He calls him safe. And it's going to be a domino stolen base by Justin Fallon at second. It's to the other side of the bag, but pretty good velocity on it from Shelton. Yeah, Shelton, Shelton makes a good throw down there again. Just gets in ahead of the tag a little bit, Fallon does there. If he puts that throw a little bit more on the base, you've probably got a chance of getting it out there. Shanks will ask for time. He's got a 2-0 count to him. One out in the inning. After the pop out by Collier Bush on the first pitch of the inning, second pitch was hit by Huddleston. Probably should have been a ground out. Instead, he's able to come around to score after the error. Minyard comes home with the pitch, misses, it's 3-0. Once again, if you guessed Tim Keefe for the trivia answer, you were correct. An 086 ERA in 1880. His rookie season in 1880. 3-0. Called strike on the outside corner to Shanks. Three balls and a strike now to Caden Shanks, who has touched 90 on the mound, and he has been dealing on the mound as well. Seven strikeouts through four innings of work. Minyard, a couple of looks back at Fallon. Shanks sends it out towards center. Myers tracking to his right, will make the grab. Fallon trying to tag, he will do so as he slides into third base safely. And with two outs in the inning, Fallon will be 90 feet away. But at least moves the runner over. And Chris Worsing will step to the plate. He has been aboard twice, a walk and a single. He drove in a run his last time up. Ripped it down the third base line. We'll see if he can do it again. Actually, he ripped it into left field. As the infield was playing in. Swings first pitch, left side of the infield. Backhand by Ostrander. High throw that's going to sail into the Cumberland County dugout. Worsing took a spill going around first. And he should be able to advance up to second here after that ball went into the dugout anyways. Yeah, really, really high throw there from Ostrander. Look, the ball just kind of slipped out of his hands as it sailed into the dugout there. But he did the job there, Worsing did. He hit a ball deep in the hole. He made. He forced the defense to make a play, and his hustle is rewarded with not just first base and the RBI, but now he also gets to go to second, and he's in scoring position himself. So a runner in scoring position now for Alec Wilson. We'll come to the plate again. Wilson last time up. And a ground ball. First time up, he was able to bring home a run. It's a 6-0 lead for the Bees. I beg your pardon, 7-0 lead for the Bees. After Fallon was able to come home and score. Worsing stands on second. That one misses away. Why 
County leading Livingston Academy. After three innings of play, one to zero right now. In baseball action, this one swung on, popped up in the infield, and caught by Minyard. That'll be the final out of the fourth. It's seven to zero, B's on top. Shanks will head back out there on the mound to face the Jets lineup. We're through four. You're watching High School Baseball presented by the South Willow Auto Clinic and the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. Frontier Chevrolet is ready to get you into your next vehicle and are proud to offer a lifetime powertrain warranty on nearly all vehicles below 80,000 miles. View inventory online at www.caseychevy.com, including the brand new Chevy Trax and Traverse, or stop in at 2350 Cookville Highway today. Remember, don't buy till you see Jason Fye. Delicious Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. With locations in Smithville, Sparta, Livingston, Allgood, and two in Cookville, Delicious Pan and Hand Tossed Pizza, Pasta, and more is never far away. Use the Domino's app to take care of your game day eats today. Domino's is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Back here in Baxter, Kane Chanks on the mound. Shout out to Mr. Vincent getting the win today for the golf team back home. DeKalb County leading Stone Memorial in baseball, 3-2 to two as well. So might have a few shakeups. Yeah, the old alma mater but back up in Indiana getting a win against one of the district rivals, conference rivals up in Indiana, shooting a clean 152 for, or beg your pardon, a 156 for a nine-hole match. Solid. That's pretty good. We didn't do that a whole lot when I was in high school. Oh, it wasn't because of you, I'm sure. You probably carried the team. Something like that. 7-0 to zero here for the Bees on top, and Kane Shanks, he has been dealing through four. He has been really good. Seven strikeouts through the four innings so far has only allowed a couple of base runners. It was a walk in the first and a hit by pitch in the second, and really, you go back to that walk, was a borderline call. You go back to the hit by pitch, and it barely nicked him on that left elbow. Yeah, Caden Shanks has had some of his best command of the season so far today. Cumberland County's had a hard time catching up to any of it. And the, the real the dagger for them has also been his off speed has is, is hit its spot every time. They're looking for that fastball. So when he drops down to 73 and gives them, gives them the off speed, they're having a hard time picking it up out of his hand. Shanks at 52 pitches right now through four innings. This one right back up the middle over the head of Shanks. Yano is there, flips to the right hand throw, and gets the first out of the inning. Seen that a few times to lead off inning so far today. Another six to three put out as Ryland Burnett will step to the plate. It's a really good mix between ground outs, between strikeouts as well. One gone in the inning here in the top half of the fifth, the breaking ball. That one missed high, and it's one and oh. Burnett, a strikeout victim in his first time up. That one misses high. Two balls and no strikes. So DeKalb County a lead over Stone Memorial. White County a lead over Livingston in baseball. There's a called strike, and it's 2-1 and one to Burnett. Over on the softball diamond here in Baxter, upper minutes, taking a lead 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth. They were trailing 1-0. to zero. That one a called strike as well, and evens the count up at 2-2. Two and two. Two-two, waved at and missed another birdies lounge strikeout. Eight strikeouts on the day for Caden Shanks and two away in the inning. So coming to the plate now will be Michael Finch. And what could be the final opportunity here for the Bees or for the Jets. Yeah, you give up three runs in the bottom of the fifth, and this game ends a little bit early. So if you're Cumberland County, you want to try to get something here, but with two outs and the way that Caden Shanks is pitching right now, obviously that's a lot easier said than done. He has been absolutely dominant. Mm -hmm. Juju Yano was yesterday. Shanks has been today. And there's a called strike, and it's 0-2. And this is when he's really at his most effective. Is he, He's worked ahead 0-2 so many times tonight, and at that point you've got to shorten up and just try to make contact. But when a guy's throwing in the high 80s, it's a lot harder to do that. Two away in the inning. Shanks delivers the 0-2 pitch. Waved at for the ninth birdies lounge strikeout of the day. And we head to the bottom of five. The Bees looking for three runs. They lead at 7-0. You're watching High School Baseball presented by the South Willow Auto Clinic and the Frontier Chevy UCR Media Network. 
Sonia Brown is a full-service realtor and is licensed across the state of Tennessee, listing and selling residential and multifamily, land and farms, commercial and industrial properties. Sonia handles the sale from start to closing and beyond. Let her put her 30-plus years of experience to work for you. Sonia Brown with American Way Real Estate has been supporting student-athletes in the Upper Cumberland since 1990. You can reach Sonia Brown at 931-979-7145. Sonia Brown, Realtor with American Way Real Estate, is proud to support this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to support student-athletes and athletic departments throughout the Upper Cumberland. They're also proud to sponsor the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game on this broadcast. From trophies to t-shirts, they can do it all. Stop by and see them at 120 Circle Drive in Allgood or give them a call at 931-537-9559. Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. From the sports field to the hunting field, our friends at Hall Sports and Outdoors can outfit anyone. Located in the heart of Jamestown at 207 South Main Street, Hall Sports and Outdoors carries everything from kayaks, fishing gear, and camo to guns and ammo. With top brands such as Columbia, Timberland, Under Armour, Asics, and much more, nobody can top their selection. Need some custom gear for your team? They also offer uniforms, gear, and custom embroidery. Stop by and see them at 207 South Main Street in Jamestown. Hall Sports and Outdoors, proud sponsor of this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Clint Connor is your local auctions expert. With full service from start to finish, the Exit Crossroads Auction Group are here to make the process easy for you. Visit CrossroadsAuctionGroup.com for more details and current auctions. Clint Connor, your local auctions expert, is proud to sponsor this broadcast on the UCR Media Network. Kellen Burnett is on the mound as the Jets go to a Hall Sports and Outdoors call to the bullpen. Minyard out after four innings of work and here in the bottom of the fifth, It'll be 6, 7, and 8 do-up. Juju Yano, Carson Chupin, Ricky Allison. Kellen Burnett, the starting second baseman, now on the mound. First pitch in there for a ball one. That one misses inside. Got another baseball final. Smith County over Jackson County, 16 to 2. They played again? Yep, that's what, that's what, hey, listen, I'm just reporting what Game Changer said. I'm just reporting what Game Changer said. Yeah, is that baseball or softball? I will look real quick. I'm just reporting what Game Changer told me, and the whole press box starting to turn against me a little bit. Well, you were at their <laughs> doubleheader. That's all, the only I, reason I, I'm asking. I, listen, I'm confused, <laughs> too. <laughs> that was the lightning ending. That was softball, my bad. There you go. That was that was softball. Three and two to Yano. Breaking ball called wow. strike three. Hmm. First strikeout for Kellen Burnett. First out of the inning, and Kurtzen Choup will come to the plate. He's been ripping it at a single in the first, a line out on a blazer. Down to R Ryland Burnett at third base, his second time up. But he has drilled it a couple of times. There's a called strike in the outside corner. You mentioned it. He's been hitting a lot better here in the last few ball games. Hit it well yesterday. He's been hitting it well today. Batting now 222 on the season. Well, and even, even some of the outs, he's hitting the ball hard, and that's what you want to see out of your hitters. Is if they're making hard contact and there's just tough luck, there's only so much you can do about that. Swings at that one, but it's right off the ankle, and it's 0-2. Minyard ousted after four innings of work against the Bees. Kellen Burnett comes on. He's on the mound right now. The Bees lead at 7-0 here in the bottom of the fifth with one gone. It's an 0-2 count to Shoop. Burnett comes home, misses away, and it's 1-2. Minyard in four innings gave up seven hits, seven runs, five were earned. He had two walks and one strikeout. Burnett trying to pick up his second, the one-two. Right back up the middle, and Shoup puts it in the outfield for the second time today. It'll be another single for Carson Shoup and a base runner aboard for rookie Allison. And again, another level swing there by Shoup as he just sends that one back up the middle on a rope as he'll get Carson Holroyd in to run for him. Holroyd will 
Come on to run, bring a little bit of speed out there for the Bees. Rookie Allison will be at the plate, a line out and a fly out so far for Rookie Allison. We'll see if he's able to get aboard for the first time. One gone in the inning with Allison at the plate. The Bees lead it 7-0. This one left side of the infield, but it eats up the shortstop, Ostrander. Everybody's safe into the outfield. It goes, and Allison able to make his way aboard, and Callier Bush will come to the plate. Yeah, error number four for the Jets on the night. And that one just a tough, tough in-between hop there that eats up the shortstop and gets through there. But now a chance for Collier Bush again to flip the lineup back up. He's had a couple really good swings tonight. See if he can put together a good A-B and work his way on board with one out here. Fourth error of the day on the Jets' defense. And now Isaiah Shelton will jog out to the mound to talk things over with Kellen Burnett. With Collier Bush at the plate, trying to flip it back to the top with one out in the inning. Runners on first and second. Second base is Carson Holroyd, who came on to run for Carson Shoup. Rookie Allison over at first. He is staying on the run as he is just a field player today, not a catcher. Probably, I was about to say, I'm not used to seeing him out there run the bases. So certainly an opportunity for something for him to work on. I know he doesn't have a lot of practice running the bases, but, you know, you want to, you still want to be aggressive here, obviously. Well, Collier Bush, he is lined out and popped out. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Trying to flip it back to the top. Get it to Evan Huddleston, who has been aboard two times. Scored twice. Fallon has done the same thing. That breaking ball misses away, and it's one and one. Bees looking for their 14th win of the season, eighth district victory of the season before the final district regular season matchup of the year next week against Livingston Academy. Comes the 1-1. One, one. Right side of the infield, Christopher bounces over his head. Tried to barehand it, Holroyd is held up at third. It will be bases loaded for Evan Huddleston with one out in the inning. That took a nasty bounce, and Christopher's big fell over there at first. Yeah, that, that's one of those, that's a tough one to rule too. I, I could see, you know, that, that, that was a massive second hop that that ball took, but that's also one that if you're Christopher at first base, if you take your step, you take a step back there, if your first move is going backwards, you probably make that play, so. I would lean towards it, that being an error and being the fifth error of the night for the Jets is their infield defense is just not is not not making things happen this inning. That is the fifth error of the game according to the official statistician Petey. Called strike on the outside corner to Huddleston. It's 0-1. And unlike the trivia question yesterday, I think Petey got that one right. <laughs> one out in the inning. Bases loaded for Evan Huddleston. Reached on an error his last time. Singled. His first time up in the first, left side of the infield. That one is through. Here comes one run. They're going to send the second runner as well. Rookie Allison will score the second run. The ball goes all the way to the backstop. Moving up to third base in the process is Collier Bush, and the winning run is now on third base. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the defense for the Jets is kind of falling apart here in this inning as a really wild throw comes in from poor out in left field, and ends up getting through and allowing not just the two runs to score, but both of the other runners to then move up as well. And now what's worse is you've got the middle of the lineup up. We talked about yesterday that bottom third of the lineup being the catalyst for the offense. They've done that again today, Jacob. It'll be Justin Fallon. They're going to intentionally walk him and load the bases for Caden Shanks. I don't think it's going to matter. No, not at <laughs> all. I, that, that's, that's, I, I understand the play there. The ploy there is, okay, you set up an out at every base, and if you, if you can, you know, just – you can at least go go home with an out to maybe save that run there. Um, that also predicates you've got to get soft contact from Caden Shanks, and against the kid that's throwing up in the 70s, that's that's not – that's that's a very, very difficult thing to do. Caden Shanks just has to put it in the outfield, and this ball game is over with. Yeah. The Bees just need one run. One out in the inning. Shanks, who's been great on the mound, can end it with one swing of the bat. Called strike in there to Shanks, 0-1. Singled in the second, walked in the first. He flew out to center his last time up. Comes the 0-1 from Burnett. Called strike on the outside corner, 0-2. Chris Worsing standing in the on-deck circle, just one out in the inning. 
Even if they get the strikeout, we'll still have a chance to end it here in the fifth. 9-0 lead right now for the Bees. He just called, He's a, balk. called a balk. He just wow. called a balk, and that is going to end the game. Wow. Collier Bush is going to come home to score the 10th run, and it's going to be an ending game ending balk, and it's going to be a 10 to 0 win for the Bees. Wow. Yeah, I, I didn't see what the move was there or what the pitcher did there. That, that there was movement, it was the slightest of movement, but again, like what like he's. Just spent the last couple of minutes saying, Jake, I'm not sure it was going to matter there, even with an 0-2 count on Caden Shanks. You then have to get him and Worsing out to keep the game going. But another dominant win over Cumberland County for the Upper Rim Bees. Well, that balk also solidifies the no-hitter in five innings for Caden Shanks. He was tremendous on the mound, did not allow a hit. Only a couple of base runners for Caden Shanks as well. And one walk, nine strikeouts in five innings pitched, and the Bees win it 10-0 to in five for their 14th win of the year and eighth the district victory of the season. Well, and, and I think that the most promising thing for this Upperman team that we've seen over the last three games now is they, they even if they get off to slow starts offensively, they've done a good job of chipping away early and then putting those big innings together late. And, and, and you like that. They, they did a good job really in every time at the bat today. Four runs in the first, they chipped away in the second, the third, and the fourth, and then in the fifth really kind of put this one away, obviously. So uh, the offense is starting to come along. We're starting to see that dominant upper team, upper men team we've seen the last two years, and it's certainly a good upward trend for Coach Shanks and his team. This is the South Little Auto Clinic postgame show, a 10-0 win in five innings for the Upperman Bees as they improve to 14-8 and on the year. Let's take you through some of the final stats. It was 10 runs on nine hits, no errors in the field for the Bees for the Cumberland County Jets, zero runs, zero hits, five errors in the field for the Jets. Ken Shanks on the mound gets the win today. Five innings, no hits, no runs, one walk, and nine strikeouts. He also hit a batter in the process, so just the two base runners on the board for them. Offensively for the Bees, had a few different guys. Evan Huddleston, two for four with two runs scored and two runs driven in. Justin Fallon, two for two with two runs scored and two runs driven in. And Carson Shoup was two for three with a run driven in as well. Rusty, who are you going to go with for the Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game? I feel like we favor pitchers so much with this award, but, I mean, when you throw a no-hitter, I don't care who it's against or, or what the level of competition is. You throw a no-hitter over five innings and you strike out nine like Caden Shanks did, he was dominant today. He was he was good at the plate, had some good swings there, but in the, on the mound, that's the difference maker. That's the ace that this team believes they have in him, so I'm going to go with Caden Shanks for the Player of the Game. That is a good decision. Caden Shanks, the <laughs> Nelson Trophy and Screen Printing Player of the Game. No-hitter in five innings. He hit a batter and he walked a batter. The only two base runners for the Jets today as the Bees win it after a balk on bases loaded brings home the winning run. Collier Bush that winning run a 10-0 win. The Bees back in action on Thursday at Watertown against one of the best teams in the 2A classification. Believe they were ranked second. The last poll that I saw the Bees still top five in the 3A classification as well so that'll be a big battle in Watertown coming up on Thursday, 6.30 start time in that one. So a little bit later, we'll be there for it. And then on Saturday as well in Nashville against CPA, that one a noon start time Love in that. Nashville. So hopefully you can join us for the next two games. That's what we have coming up the rest of this week as far as streaming goes. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you then. For us to yell us. And Goose, who is out here tonight, he's over at softball right now, so make sure you pay attention to the website, UpperCumberlandReporter.com, for the game recap, photo, and stories afterwards.